Hey y'all, Desiree here. I've got a nice, probably 15 minute-ish prenatal yoga sequence for you. I myself am 19 weeks today, so I'm starting to get a little bigger. Some things are starting to get a little uncomfortable, so we're, we'll see where we go. Um, all of our bodies are gonna be completely different during this experience, so if you need to modify something, modify as needed. If you need your blocks, grab your blocks. If you need a blanket, a pillow, use whatever you need to do to get through it. Also, please make sure that you check with your doctor before you do any type of physical activity uh, during your pregnancy, especially if it's brand new, even yoga. And if you're not pregnant, feel free to follow along with us as well. All right, so we are going to start in table pose. I love starting with cat-cow. For most of my classes and most of my yoga practices, just to get the spine moving and the hips moving. So we'll go ahead and just start in a neutral spine. Make sure your hands are just to the outsides of your shoulders, index finger pointing straight ahead. And I would like your toes tucked under for now, knees directly over your hips. Go ahead and inhale, melting your chest towards the floor, lifting your head and tail. And then exhale, round your back, pressing the floor away from you. Inhale, melt the chest, lifting your head and tail. And exhale, round your back, pressing the floor away from you, pulling your belly button in as much as it will go. Inhale, melt the chest. And exhale, round the back. So we're just getting some movement in the spine. If you want, you can start to make circular motions with your cat and cow. If you do do these circular motions, make sure that you reverse the circle. Sometimes these feel nice. It just depends on what your body needs in the moment. And on your next inhale, go ahead and settle back to a neutral spine. Bring your feet together, untucking your toes, knees apart, and settle back into child's pose. And we'll just rest here for a moment. So for me, some of my leggings are getting a little tight, and I'm refusing to buy maternity leggings until I get bigger. So child's pose, depending on my leggings, is a little uncomfortable. So sometimes I just like to keep it here. Or maybe even bring a block under my head so I can relax. Blocks are not cheating. They're just bringing the floor closer to you to make poses more accessible. Nice, go ahead and make your way up to table again. Let's go ahead and step our right foot forward for low lunge. So I want you to be on your fingertips Belly can be to the inside of your leg. Spread your toes wide. Pull that right hip back, left hip forward, and reach through the crown of your head to lengthen your spine. I don't know why, but these lunges have felt so good to me for the past week or so. So hopefully they feel just as good for you. Take your left hand out to the side, fingers pointing away from you, and then twist towards the right. Pulling the shoulder blades together, opening your chest, towards the ceiling, getting a nice back bend, really stretching and reaching. And go ahead and bring that hand back down. And then while we're here, let's go ahead and straighten that front leg, peeling the toes back towards the face, digging that heel down into the ground and pulling that right hip back. So you get a nice stretch on that right leg and runner stretch. Make sure you're breathing here and keep pulling those toes back. <sighs> nice, go ahead and make your way back to table. Also, your transitions don't need to be graceful. Do what you gotta do to get from pose to pose. Let's do the other side. Step your left foot forward. I'm glad I gave a graceful talk before this side. And we'll be on our fingertips once again. Pull your left hip back, right hip forward, reach through the crown of your head to lengthen your spine. Again, belly to the inside of the leg. And if this is uncomfortable, you can always move that front foot out a little bit more, bringing the arm to the inside of the leg to create more space for your belly. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Take the right hand out to the side, fingers pointing away from you, and twist towards the left. Reaching up with that arm again, getting a nice back bend, opening the chest, really reaching towards the ceiling or the sky or whatever's above you. And bring that arm down. Go ahead and make 
Oh no, not yet. We're not going to the table yet. We gotta do our runner stretch on this side. So go ahead and straighten the front leg. Peel the toes back towards your face. Dig that heel down into the ground. Pull your left hip back. And then get that nice stretch in the left side. Again, for any of these poses, you can always move that front leg out a couple inches to create more space for your belly. And we're breathing evenly here. Good, go ahead and make your way back to table. Again, does not need to be graceful. Nothing needs to be graceful. And let's go ahead and take another couple rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, melt the chest, lifting your head and tail. And exhale, rounding your back, pressing the floor away from you. Inhale, melt the chest, lifting head and tail, keeping your arms straight. And exhale, round the back. Good, one more time. Inhale, melt the chest, lifting the head and tail. Make sure that you're not doing the move with your eyebrows and it's your body that's actually doing it. And exhale, round the back. On your next inhale, settle back to a neutral spine. Go ahead and move your knees back a few inches and we'll press back into down dog. And from here, we're just gonna walk our dog. So just alternating your legs, stretching out the back of each leg individually, pressing your hips back. You can always keep both knees bent if you want. And again, you can always take your feet wider if you need to create more space for your belly. Make sure that you're breathing. Just walking the dog here, settle back to center. If you'd like, you can swish your heels side to side, wagging your tail, getting a nice side body stretch. The side body stretching has felt really good for me as well. And anyone else notice they're getting a little breathless? Don't know if you can tell that with me. And settle back to center. Good. Bend your knees. Go ahead and walk your hands back to your feet. And again, you can take your feet as wide as you need to. Inhale, arch up halfway. And exhale, fold forward. You can always use your blocks here if you need to bring the floor closer to you. Inhale, arch up halfway. And exhale, fold forward. Go ahead and walk your hands back out. This time we'll go to a brief plank pose. Just holding for a moment. If you want to hold it a little longer, you can. And we'll lower the knees, coming back to table. And we'll do a couple rounds of bird dog here. So go ahead and stretch your left leg back, keeping the heels directly over the ball of the foot. Using your glutes, lift that leg without arching the back. And then stretch the right arm forward, thumb facing up. Good, and come down, we'll do the other side. Right foot stretches back, heel directly over the ball of the foot. Using your glutes, lift that leg, stretch the left arm forward, thumb facing up. Nice, and now that we've got both sides established, we're just gonna alternate, switching side to side, trying not to move the torso too much, getting some nice balance training here, working our core. See, we don't have to do crunches to work the core. And we'll just do a couple more rounds of this, making sure that the spine stays neutral, just the arm and leg that are moving, Make sure you're still breathing evenly. And we'll do one more on each side. Good, last one. Nice, and settle back to center. Go ahead and take your feet together, knees apart and child's pose as you would like. I'm gonna go to my modified child's pose. You can do your stretched out one. And just settle here taking a few breaths. Letting the floor and the block support you. Just resting. Resting is wonderful. Good, and then go ahead and make your way up to table again. You can move your block off to the side if you chose to use that. And we're gonna step our right foot forward for lunge again. This time, we're gonna lift the back leg off the ground. Pulling that right hip back, left hip forward, reaching through the crown of the head. Good, hold this for a couple breaths. 
And then from here, keeping your feet where they are, I want you to straighten that front leg as much as you can and stretch forward here. Pulling that right hip back, left hip forward. We'll take one more breath and back to lunge. Good. One more time, go ahead and straighten that front leg. And come back to lunge. Lower your back knee and we'll transition to the other side. Left foot forward, starting in low lunge. Hold please, leggings adjustment. All right, from here we'll lift the back knee. Pull, I'm sorry, the back knee. Left hip back, right hip forward. Holding this lunge for a few breaths. Keeping that back leg super duper straight. And then go ahead and straighten the front leg. Pulling that left hip back, still rounding forward. And come back to lunge. Keeping your feet where they are. Noticing that I'm staying up on the ball of the back foot as I stretch that front leg once again. And come back to lunge. Good, lower that back knee, making your way back to table. And we'll go ahead and have a seat. Oh, taking a nice easy pose. So if you're in this position it's not comfortable for you, you can always sit up on some blocks, some blankets, uh, bolster, pillows, whatever elevates your hips a little to give you a little bit more space. From here I want you to take your left hand, so I'm gonna be mirroring you now. Left hand out to the side, reaching up and over with the right arm, really stretching the right side of the body. And up and over to the other side. Stretching that side body, and again, up and over to the other side. And one more time. Nice, coming back to center. Go ahead and take your hands to your knees, and then we're just gonna do some rib cage circles. So just circling the rib cage. In dance, we like to call these isolations because you're just isolating a certain part of the body. This is a great way to get that spine moving. It just feels really nice. And let's go the other way. You can put on some like cool 80s tunes and do some rib cage isolations. That's always really fun. Nice and settle back to center. Good. You can go ahead and switch the cross of your legs. And then we're going to do a few connection breaths. So you can either take your hands to your knees or you can take your hands to your belly. You can also take one hand to your rib cage, one hand to your belly. And this is just to give feedback. So if you want to use this moment to connect with your baby, you can do that. You don't have to do that though. Not everybody's into that. Some people are. Whatever you're into is totally cool. So I do want you though to use your hands uh, for feedback if you do have them on your belly or rib cage and belly. So as you inhale, I want you to expand your diaphragm, expand the ribs. Try to relax your pelvic floor. And on your exhale, you're gonna feel the rib cage compress, diaphragm compress, and you wanna lift the pelvic floor, just like you're uh, stopping the flow of urine when you're going to the bathroom. But don't do like 100% squeeze, just do a mild squeeze, like 35% overachievers sometimes. And inhale, and exhale. So we're going to do about 10 of these. I'm not going to talk you through all of them simply because it's very hard for me to talk and do the connection breath at the same time, but I would like you to use this time to do 10 connection breaths. And then if you'd like after that, you can either meditate or lie down um, and do a Shavasana, whatever feels good for you. So I hope you are enjoying your pregnancy if you are pregnant and if you're not enjoying it, that's okay too. Whatever you are feeling is completely valid and okay. And I just want your body to feel good right now. Thank you for practicing with me today.